Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The advocate of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. The Gospel of the Lord. slouch a lot in class. I have chronic bad posture. My 10th grade English teacher, Mrs. Wagner, tried to break me at that habit. She would often remind me, Michael, sit up straight, stand up straight. And when I give a speech in class, she would say, Plant your feet firmly on the ground. Stand up straight. Look directly at your audience and speak to them personally. And if you do that, people will think you know what you're talking about, even if you don't. <laughs> Look confident and in control, even if you're not. As often happens, we discover years later how right our 10th grade teachers are. Today, in the passage from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear how St. Paul was such a good teacher. Not just a teacher of the faith, but a teacher of how to teach the faith. Perhaps more accurately, how to evangelize. St. Paul taught the crippled man at Lystra how to evangelize. St. Paul looked intently at him, looked directly at your audience. And then he said in a loud voice, with confidence, stand up straight on your feet. The crippled man jumped up and began to walk up the hill. Stand up straight, put your feet firmly on the ground. And Paul, of course, knew what he was talking about, and he was full of confidence. He didn't have to think. But he knew what he was talking about, not on his own merits, but rather because he knew Jesus Christ personally. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit who reminded him of everything that the Lord taught him. Graduates of the Archbishop Clinton Catechetical Institute, these past few years, you have had some of the best teachers in the world. You have studied the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And now you know everything there is to know about what the church teaches, right? <laughs> well, maybe not quite everything. But not to worry. You have an advocate, the Holy Spirit, we heard in the gospel today, who will teach you everything. Everything that you missed, and remind you of everything you learned. In these last two years, you have learned not only the truths of the Catholic faith, but you have come to know truth itself, truth himself. 
May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of His beauty. Through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Let's 
Special thanks to Kelly Balquist, uh, the director of the Archbishop Flynn Catechetical Institute, and to all the teachers of the Institute. And uh, congratulations to the graduates of the 2020 Archbishop Flynn Catechetical Institute, the class of Blessed Pier Giorgio Persati. Uh, seven of those uh, members are here among us. The rest of you are out, uh, scattered, out and about. So congratulations to all of you. There are 131 graduates in all. And uh, we will have a special closing prayer and a blessing for the graduates. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our bow to bless you. Heavenly Father, during these last two years, you have accompanied these graduates on a journey from blessing to blessing as they have learned about your plan of sheer goodness through their study of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. As they now complete their studies, we pray that you continue to accompany them by the guidance of your Holy Spirit. With Blessed Pier Giorgio Versailles as their patron, we ask that you fill them with the spirit of joy in knowing and loving you. Fill them with the spirit of courage as they proclaim you to the nations. And fill them with the spirit of peace as they look forward to eternal life in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son. What a great honor it is to share a few words with you as you graduate from the Catechetical Institute. Now I know that it's fittingly a moment of great pride for you and your families. You've worked so hard over these past years. You've poured yourselves out in service. You should be proud of what it is that you've accomplished. But besides being a moment of pride for you and your families, it's also a moment of great joy and celebration for this local church, for our archdiocese. As we reflect on the great gifts that the Lord has given to you, gifts that will now be put into the service of this local church. You know, this is one of those great events that uh, bishops always look forward to participating in. Bishop Cousins and I have to arm wrestle every year to see who gets to come for this graduation because it's so inspiring for us. I certainly wish that for such an august occasion, we would have the opportunity to be face to face in the seminary chapel rather than merely screen to screen. But we certainly are grateful for whatever opportunities that we have to pass on to you our sincerest congratulations and our gratitude as well. Who would ever have imagined, however, that you would be concluding your time at the Catechetical Institute at a time with a stay-at-home order. Not something that any of us would have anticipated as you completed your final module. I like to think, however, that God in his providence has arranged for you to have the solitude of the mountaintop, have that solitude come to you as you focus on the pillar of prayer. Kelly Walquist has assured me that this class has come to know, be still and know that I am God, 
in a way that was never anticipated. We give thanks to God for that. How wonderful that we have a God who is an exquisite planner and who knows just what it is that we need. Speaking of mountaintops, I suspect that you have to be the envy of every other catechetical institute class, not only because of your brilliance, but because of your patron, the young mountain climber, Pier Giorgio Frassati. I was always delighted in the years that I spent in Rome to hear St. John Paul speak so often of Pier Giorgio and really to also raise him to the, uh, the heights of beatification. You know, St. John Paul II himself was a mountain climber, so he had a, a special affection for Pier Giorgio and in fact named him as one of the patrons of World Youth Day. But one of the amazing things about Pier Giorgio Frassati was the way in which he was able to uh, live out his faith in ordinariness. He was extraordinary in so many regards, but he lived out his faith, faith in, in ordinary life. His biographer, Maria Di Lorenzo, puts it best when she describes him as a man who succeeded in wrestling holiness from everyday life. Others would refer to Pier Giorgio, including St. John Paul, as a man of the Beatitudes. Wouldn't that be a goal for all of us to aspire to, to be uh, men and women of the Beatitudes? Certainly, it's my uh, great delight that our Catechetical Institute has been preparing you to be men and women of the Beatitudes, to really understand our faith and then to be able to live it as did Pier Giorgio. I love how Pier Giorgio had such a deep desire to know the depths of his faith, of our faith, and then how he would work so hard to put it into action. His charity was, uh, was known by so many in, in Torino, and he certainly lived in such a way that people re would often remark about his extraordinary virtue. All of us, I think, have to be able to aspire to that, to going deep in our faith and then going forward and sharing how it is that we've encountered the love of our God. I suspect that in some circles, this class will always be remembered as being the class with the virtual graduation. In my mind, however, you'll always be the class that graduated in the year of our prayer and listening events in anticipation of our synod. I've been reading in recent weeks the input from the 8,000 participants. Many of you were there, many of you participated. I was so grateful for that. I so much appreciate the comments that came forward, the way in which so many have called us to go deeper into our faith and then to respond to the call to evangelize our brothers and sisters. We see that hunger that's within us to, to know Christ and his church, and we know that we're called to go forward as missionary disciples. We do that, as did Pier Giorgio, as much through our works of charity as we do through our teaching. With Pier Giorgio, I suspect that you've learned the importance of Duke and Altum, which was one of his slogans, put out into the deep. For us, we know that that means putting out into the deep of our rich Catholic teaching. It means putting out into the deep of the relationship that Jesus Christ offers to each one of us. And once we've had that experience, that experience that we can only have in the deep, it's then that we go forward inspiring others, our brothers and sisters, to keep their eyes fixed on the mountaintop, to keep their eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. In fact, one of the other slogans of Pier Giorgio was verso l'alto, to the heights, to the mountaintop. That was his rallying cry. It was the way in which he would inspire his brothers and sisters who would be tiring in the midst of their climb. I'm excited when I think of the great work that you, the class of Pier Giorgio Frassati, will be accomplishing as you are unleashed from the Catechetical Institute. It's been a wonderful experience, but just think of all of the the time you're going to have now and the opportunities that you're going to have to put into practice all that you've learned. May the Lord bring to fruition the great work he has begun in you. Thank you and congratulations.
I want to congratulate all of you in the class of Pierre Giorgio Frassati for your graduation and uh, a job well done. A finish, a little bit different, but it is graduation nonetheless. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes and uh, bring you kind of a word of encouragement as you go forward. And I want to kind of introduce you to two people who are not strangers to you who can help you walk through this, this quarantine period. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ and the Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary. You know, this is a really difficult time for many people, but the truth of the matter is you have been preparing for this. You've been preparing for times where you really have to rely upon the Lord and all of the resources that the Lord has given us, whether it's his word or whether it's the teachings of the church, the communion of saints, and especially the Blessed Mother. When we look at Jesus and what he has given us, we, we see that it really is reflected in the last two years of your formation and your education. You've gone through the entire catechism and most people simply can't say that, that they have spent so much time going deep into the faith. But now is the time for us to gather what we have learned. Now is the time for us to look back and to, to highlight what has really made an impression on us. I find oftentimes that the Holy Spirit reminds me of things that I have learned in the past, things that I now need to apply in my life. And as you look through your notes, you're going to see all kinds of highlights and maybe asterisks on the, in the column, places where you said, you know, this is so important, this is going to be a real pillar in my life. Well, now's the time to gather those truths and ask yourself, how can I put this into practice? The thing that we have really been going after is what the New Testament calls the pearl of great price. Now the pearl of great price is the kingdom of God. Well, the kingdom of God is the rule and reign of Jesus in our lives. So let me ask you a question as I ask myself the same question. As we're quarantined in our, in our homes, some of us with children, maybe your children have left home and they're on their own now, but nevertheless, you're in your home and we have to ask ourselves, are you really going after this pearl? The rule and reign of Christ in your relationship with your spouse, with your children, with your colleagues at work, on Zoom. It can be very, very difficult and challenging. So if we will take what we have learned and, and we will think of it in terms of the pearl of great price, we'll find out something interesting about ourselves in the last two years. And that is that we have given up other things to obtain the pearl of great price. Maybe you gave up finances, maybe you gave up time or other commitments that you've had on Monday nights throughout the last few years and you said, I'm going to give all of this up because I'm going after something even greater, which is the kingdom of God. Continue to pursue Jesus and the rule and reign of Jesus in every area of your life. I have discovered in the last two months that there are areas where he's not ruling, he's not reigning and I need to give that over to him. Now Jesus also gives us a tremendous gift. In John chapter 19, we see that Jesus gives his mother to the church. In John chapter two, we have a, at the wedding at Cana, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful teaching where at the wedding, the Blessed Virgin Mary says, they have no wine. They have no wine. Now St. John Paul II, in, in, in his wonderful encyclical on Mary, he brings out such beautiful truths about this event at Cana. And he says that the Blessed Virgin Mary has been given to us in a new order of motherhood, the spiritual order of motherhood. And so she is the mother to every single one of us. And when she says at Cana, they have no wine, St. John Paul II says that, that that issue of wine or that topic of wine, that need of wine is symbolic of your wants, your needs, and your suffering. And so I'm encouraging you upon graduation now to really sit down and ask yourself, what are your wants? What are your needs? What are the sufferings that you are going through? 
and I encourage you to give those to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She will take those to the Lord and she will take those into his salvific radius where grace is found. This is a marvelous, marvelous truth and a wonderful gift to us as members of the church. You know, I was studying just recently and I, I was thinking about the Blessed Virgin Mary and the pearl of great price. And I ran into, maybe coincidentally, a, a truth that has made a big difference in my own life. A pearl usually starts with either bacteria, something, a grain of sand, and it gets lodged into a mussel or an oyster or a clam. And over about a three-year period, there is a process of coating after coating over this irritation that it results in a beautiful, beautiful pearl. Now, that is interesting to me because it is within the confines of a clam, an oyster, or a mussel that something beautiful is formed. Now, you are being quarantined right now, but joining you is someone who will help you to take the irritations and the frustrations of your life and turn them into something beautiful. The substance that's put into the clam, if you are going to create a beautiful pearl, is called mother of pearl. And it suddenly dawned on me that the Blessed Virgin Mary is the mother of pearls. She's not only the mother of the pearl of great price, Jesus and his ruling and reigning in his kingdom, but she is also the mother of pearls. God is doing something beautiful in your life right now. And I encourage you to go to the Blessed Mother with all of your needs, all of your wants, and all of your sufferings and say, help me at this particular time. And so if you will take pen to paper, knees to ground, hearts to God, I believe that, that God, along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, can make something beautiful out of the frustrations and the wants, the needs and the sufferings and the difficulties that you may be going through right now. Again, congratulations, and continue to stay with the Catechetical Institute. I encourage you to share with others what we're doing. And coming up in the fall, we have a, the School of Discipleship. I encourage you to be a part of that, as well as inviting other people. We're going to be live, but we're also going to be streaming on the internet, just in case people are uncomfortable or we can't meet. One way or another, we're going to stay here with you on this journey, and we ask you to pray for us. We'll continue to pray for you. And may the mother of pearls continually be with you to form you into that wonderful, wonderful disciple who goes for the pearl of great price. God bless you.